Good afternoon, viewers. We are live again from Sakra World Hospital, Bangalore. Today, I have Dr. Roshan Adappa. Welcome to this session, sir. Thank you, Kaushik. Thank you. Uh, for, for people uh, who don't know him yet, he's an associate consultant uh, with us, and he has a very, very keen interest with regards to pain medicine and chronic pain management. So we're gonna kickstart the session with the first question: What is chronic pain? Yeah, that's a very good uh, question, Kaushik. Generally, any pain which lasts for more than three months is called chronic pain. And WHO has said that to classify this, there's seven different types of chronic pain. Basically, there's head and neck pain, your cancer pain, your any nerve pain, your abdominal pain, pelvic pain, etc. Now, out of this, one of them is sort of musculoskeletal pain, which we're going to talk about further. So, any pain which lasts for more than three months is chronic pain. Chronic pain. Coming to the topic of the day, which is myofascial pain. Yeah. So if you could also elaborate a little bit on uh, what's myofascial pain. Sure. So like I said, chronic pain is quite prevalent all over the world, but among which the most common type of chronic pain among all the seven is musculoskeletal pain. And out of which, what that means is any pain which originates from your muscles or your bones is called uh, musculoskeletal. And coming specific to myofascial pain, it's basically pain which is arising from the muscles. So any sort of overuse or you uh, injury to the muscles or any sort of increased anxiety in, the, in your life which leads to increased stresses on your muscles, that can cause basically the muscle to sort of clump up and form the painful uh, point in the muscle called as trigger. So generally a combination of overuse, stretching or sometimes even underuse causes increased muscle pain. This is called as myofascial pain which we see very very commonly in our clinic uh, in our setup. Well, you just said that it's, it's pretty common here. Yeah. So within your practice, day-to-day -day practice, what kind of pain usually Bangaloreans come up and consult you with? Right. So obviously, you know, COVID pandemic uh, has changed a lot of things. People are actually working more from home. Um, generally, what we've seen, there was a recent sort of survey, among, especially among software professionals. And, uh, and that holds true even to the uh, patients which I've seen in my clinic. So almost 50% of the patients are complaining of uh, low back pain when they're coming with myofascial pain. The second highest incidence is neck pain, followed by the third, which is shoulder pain. And this all generally we seen among sort of people who are working from home, software professionals, etc. Right. So is there any particular age bracket? I also understand from, I'm just picking up from you, that uh, yeah. there must be a certain age group which is probably coming up with such problems. Sure, yeah. I mean, uh, so WHO did a survey across the world. If you say chronic pain per se, uh, there's a way variant sort of incidence of chronic pain across the world average is about 33 uh, 33 percent uh, in India a recent survey showed about 20 percent of uh, adults having sort of chronic pain and generally the age bracket which falls is uh, between 50 to 60 so average is between 50 to 60 but uh, recently a trend is also being seen this chronic pain is more among the younger people also so between 20 and 30 year olds also coming with chronic pain but on average, I would say in India, the age is still about 45 years. Between 45 to 50 years is the main age bracket which people come in. So the younger people are quite recently, they are coming uh, and... Yes, and again, the biggest factor being is the COVID pandemic. Now people are working from home, so there's obviously a huge disruption to the regular life, the lifestyle, etc. So more and more younger people are also coming with... Uh, sort of myofascial pain, at least when it comes to myofascial pain, yes. Incidence has okay. slowly moved towards the younger age group also. Uh, it's quite interesting to pick up that even the younger people are coming up because uh, when we consider work from home, it's like a more easy kind of a setup. They are more comfortable. Yeah. This should not be the case, right? No, that's a, that's a good point. You know, we as doctors, we do not know what it feels like to work from home. <laughs> but for software professionals, I can understand it's a huge disruption to their sort of work pattern. The biggest key factor is uh, working from home is they spend long hours in front of the computers without taking adequate breaks. Whereas if you come to the office, you know, you have a specific time, you have a lunch break, your tea break, your coffee breaks, etc. But when you're working from home, I think that pattern gets disrupted. And I've spoken to many of my friends also working from home. So they have odd working hours, the clientele, you know, they're always on call pretty much. They wake up and they're on the computer and they do not take much breaks. So when you are inactive for prolonged periods of time in front of a computer, bunched up, hunched up, so there's a lot of stresses on your neck, your shoulders, and your back. And on top of that, COVID pandemic, there was also fear to someone's life, and there's extra stresses, financial strain, etc. So combination of increased physical inactivity, 
and mental stress led to an increased incidence of myofascial pain in that particular age group. Well, good that you brought up some of the contributing factors which is leading to such a increased uh, incidences of chronic pain. Yeah. But if you could just elaborate a little bit more on that, like what else is contributing to this? Right. Um, so the biggest uh, things are, like I said, prolonged working hours in front of the computer without taking adequate breaks, uh, disruption of the sleep pattern. When your sleep pattern gets disrupted, that's when even chronic pain sort of kicks in. How you feeling emotional whenever there's increased stress because how you feel emotions sort of drive the pain the more stressful you are especially financial stresses family stresses that sort of increases the incidence of pain and so people are working prolonged working hours uh, not taking enough breaks not having enough water and even the food the food habits are also irregular work uh, eating habits um, especially a lot of junk food, you know, when you're at home, you tend to sort of grab whatever's closest to you, say a lot of these chips and your chocolates and your soft drinks, etc. So what happens is when you're taking uh, food which is high in sort of sugar, salt or fat, that also causes increased inflammation. And on top of that, so first of all, you're working hunched up, so your muscles have a lot of tension, stress, you're carrying financial stress, mental stress, that also tenses the muscle. And your food habits so your muscles are not healing because you're not having enough water and you're having very poor food habits so all these three things also contributing uh, contributing to myofascial pain what i'm seeing here perfect perfect what one can do to correct all this because i don't foresee that this work from home is gonna end anytime soon yeah that's a good point um so the biggest i would say like i said you know uh, People are working from home, so what that means is there is a decreased physical activity. So it's sort of a misnomer. Sometimes we feel, okay, I have sort of I have muscle pain, I should rest. Actually, sometimes inactivity itself causes more pain because inactivity leads to deconditioning, and deconditioning leads to weakness of the muscle, and this weakness of the muscle actually causes increased pain. So okay. the biggest thing is, you know, as you're working in front of your computer, do take adequate breaks. Every 45 minutes in front of a computer, just do a quick stretch, go for a 5 minute walk, etc. Come down, have a glass of water, hydrate yourself uh, and so increase physical activity. And as time increases, I think more and more people should increase the physical activity because now gyms are opening, swimming pools are opening. So get back to walking, get back to cycling, get back to the gym. That's the biggest thing. Second thing is the ergonomic, uh, <coughs> you need an ergonomic uh, sort of station. So that's what that means is as you work in front of a computer, you should never be sort of leaning forward or leaning to back. You should be the computer, the screen should be at your eye level. So you should not be sort of all your stresses should not be just on the neck. You know, your whole body should support yourself. And as you're sitting also, you make sure your legs are, should be like 90 degrees. Your knees should be 90 degrees to the ground. So your hips are not too flexed or not too extended. Always adjust your chair so that your legs are actually 90 degrees. You can also put one or two pillows under your legs if you have severe arthritis, etc. That leaves release the stress from your hips, etc. <coughs> Excuse me. And also prolong the make sure you're in next to a window with natural light because sometimes in an artificial light or in a in sort of if you're in a hall, make sure there's enough natural light. And after one or two hours, your eyes also begin to pain a bit. So make sure you do some relaxation exercises for the eyes. You know, just close your eyes with your palm of your hand and then open them. So your eyes are sort of used to the dark and so that relaxes your eyes. And the other exercise you can do is look at the near object and a far object, near object and a far object. So that also sort of helps relax the eyes. Um, adequate water, fluids and the dietary changes. Like I said, avoid sort of high, uh, you know, salt, sugar, etc. Include more fruits um, like berries and nuts. Uh, increase pineapples, etc. Because you need more antioxidants to help in sort of uh, uh, muscle healing, um, adequate water, like I said, increase your better sleep hygiene is also very important so that when your work is done, do have that off screen time for at least one. Uh, and, but most importantly, you need those stretches, etc. So, even for five minutes, if you can do every 45 minutes in front of a computer, just do quick stretches just in your chair or just go for a walkabout, uh, those are important. And combining with all these things, you also, because like I said, one of the biggest implications of pain is how you're feeling your emotions are very important so if you're feeling a lot of stress etc every 10 you know 10 15 minutes a day just do relaxation techniques deep breathing exercises because the more you decrease your mental strain uh, more your pain will also come from because the emotions are also important and how your body 
actually is is also important. Perfect. Picking up what you just said that some of the exercise can actually help and I think a lot of people will take comfort from it. Yeah. Why don't we just, I know we have a small setup here, but if you could show a few stretches uh, which can really help people who are suffering from this pain. Sure, sure. I mean, I think many people will always say, I mean, all of us have a trigger, like Koshik, if I sort of uh, feel there for you also, I mean, many of them will say, yes, I do have sort of tension there, you know. And this myofascial pain, what I see in my clinic all the time is, uh, many people come with headaches, you know, they get tension band headaches sort of pain there or pain above the eyes or the pain here or back of the neck they always think that is migraine but it's not it's actually because of myofascial pain that's because there's a big muscle on your back called the trapezius muscle all right it starts from your sort of neck and goes to your shoulders and goes to the middle of your back so it's like a diamond shaped muscle and that takes a lot of stress especially like i said if you have if you're overusing your muscle or underusing your muscle or you're under increased mental stress, that muscle becomes very tight and certain fibers and thick bands are formed on your muscle. So if you actually press around your muscle, there's one proper sort of painful thing and if you press that, that pain sometimes even radiates towards the head. Right. All right. So to relax these things, we can do a couple of stretches. And a lot of people have trapezius muscle uh, sort of triggers and tension. They also have this neck muscle that is called the sternocleidomastoid mastoid muscle which starts from your mastoid etc and goes down there. That also gets very tense. If you feel up and down like at one particular point you might jump and that is your trigger. And many people who actually have triggers that if you press it really hard they get headaches on top of their on top of the eyes. So just I'll teach you simple stretches which stretches your neck muscle and a trapezius muscle because these are two main muscles which are involved in sort of myofascial pain and especially people who are sort of working from home nowadays. So simple thing, as I'm sitting, just relax yourself. Do come into sort of a quiet room. Just look up and down. You can do that for about 10 times. Bend towards the sides. Do that for about 10 times. Go back and forth like this. So as you're sitting like this, if I'm looking at eye level, um, you, should, you should do this back and forth, maybe about 10 times. And when you come back, come into this position, and then you go again left and right. So this really nicely stretches your neck muscle, which is the sternocleidomastoid muscle. All right, so do that about 10 times. And now focusing on the trapezius muscle, there are sort of five movements which you can do, which you have to do. And uh, I'll hold that position for about 90 seconds. That really releases any sort of tension which you have on either side of your thing. So the five movements which you need to do is, you just have to, Lift it. If, if I'm feeling a sort of pain around my upper back there, then what I have to do is I focus on my left side first and then I'll do it on my right side. So just sitting on my position, I'll just lift my shoulder up towards my ear and put my shoulder back. That's the second movement. Third movement, I'm going to bend my head towards a particular shoulder. Fourth movement I'm going to do is bend it back. And the last moment is look the opposite way. So it looks a bit awkward, um, but what I'm doing right now is I'm bunching up this muscle, the trapezius muscle. So the muscle, once it becomes really tight, you hold this position for about 90 seconds. You really hold it for 90 seconds and then you can relax. So what we're doing is when a muscle becomes really tight, that particular muscle fiber is not getting any blood. So when the muscle does not get any blood for a long time, that's why it becomes sore. And when it becomes sore, that pain sort of radiates towards the neck, towards the head. And you sometimes some people feel nauseous also. It's, it's very severe pain. It really affects your work quite a bit. And you know people think it's headache. It's actually not. It's just a simple sort of trigger there. So by bunching up the muscle, what you're doing is your muscle becomes really tight. So there's no blood going anywhere to this particular muscle. So after 90 seconds, when you relax it, there's increased blood flow to the whole muscle. And whatever bands which are tight will become very, very loose and relaxed. So you actually feel really good after a while. So just do that for 90 seconds. Same thing on the other side. So it's one, two, retract the shoulders, three, bend it towards the same side, four, and then five, look the opposite way. So you're really bunching up that muscle, keep the opposite shoulder really relaxed and time for 90 seconds. So that's a other exercise for trapezes. And probably the last one you can do is just sitting on the chair, just sort of look up and look down like this, really stretched out. So this will work on your trapezes, your neck muscles, your rhomboids, etc. So you're getting a full upper stretch. 
the whole thing takes about five to ten minutes. So whenever you, you, if you can do this three times a day, that really sort of takes care most of your neck pain and your and your upper back. You can also ask your partners for to feel whichever muscles really really tight. That severe tenderness is there. Ask them to press that particular area with your thumb and go really deep and hold it for thirty seconds and release it. That also tends to release the the trigger. Okay. All right. But if you can also do the Surya Namaskar, you can. Just you know, that stretches the whole muscle. I think there's nothing better exercise out there than a Surya Namaskar. Surya if you can do it, do it ten times a day. That really stretches your whole muscle. So you know, what we think is only athletes need to warm up before they think. But even software professionals, if you, even if you're working from home, it's good you do your stretches etc before sitting down. I think uh, that's a great piece of advice, and a lot of people will find. That yeah, this this really can be a cure without seeing a doctor. Yeah. But then uh, there there would be a set of people who would have tried all of this yeah. and yet nothing's happening. Yeah. So what's your advice to them? Sure. So whenever the so the patients who come to a pain clinic, so they obviously tried everything. So what happens in a I'll just give a brief thing as a pain doctor. So when we see a pain patient coming in, we take a detailed history and we come up with a with a plan. Usually, as pain doctors, we have four options, and we use all four, or you know, whatever best suits a particular patient. So it all depends on the history, etc. So the most common thing is yes, medications. We give medications. So normal medication. What we do for my facial pain is your normal st non-steroidals like ibuprofen. We give paracetamol. If it's sort of nerve type medication, sometimes you know we also give amitriptyline, etc. So medications is one aspect of what we do. The second aspect is also, like I said, psychological stress plays a very, very important part of what drives the pain. Because any negative emotions like fear, anxiety, stress, lack of sleep drives the pain. So if I feel there's a lot of fear and anxiety, I, I can gauge a patient. Uh, I will teach them relaxation techniques. I will do cognitive behavior therapy, basically sort of challenging the patient's behavior. Like they'll say, no, doctor, if I move, I feel pain will increase more. I'll say, no, that's not correct. I tell them why why movement is more important. So sort of challenge the negative perceptions of pain, etc., and give them more positive outlook. Because the moment they feel okay, this is just a muscle pain, it'll get better. But once they give them that hope, they actually feel better. All right. So the cognitive behavior therapy is very important. However, if I feel there's a lot of your anxiety, I'm not able to do. I'll also refer them to a psychologist also. The okay. counseling sessions are also very important. The third option is rehabilitation physiotherapy, which is important. Like I said, the basic stretches, what we do, I just showed you. But I feel there's a lot more triggers, a lot more sessions which are required. Then we have a very good physiotherapy rehabilitation team here at Sarkar. They, they're brilliant. Um, so they actually gauge each muscle and other therapies, what the physiotherapists do, they might do ultrasound therapy, they'll do dry needling techniques. Um, obviously deep massages, etc, tense machine therapy, so they have a lot of physiotherapy rehabilitation and they'll give you a stretch of exercises which the patient can follow up at home. So these are three main core things which any, it's not only myofacial pain, so any pain patient which comes, it's medications, psychological assessment, the relaxation techniques and rehabilitation. If the first three things do not work, then the fourth option comes into play, I'll talk about injections and interventions. So if the patient's tried everything and still there's a bit of soreness, so I can, the last point I can do is I can probably do ultrasound guided injection. So we target particular tender points along the muscle, we give some local anesthesia steroids. And there's also some benefits for giving small doses of Botox also, which tends to relax the muscle. But I always leave that as a last option. That's the last option. As a chronic pain doctor, right. you do not want injections as a first, because the first three are patient driven. Right. A, a good pain doctor, basically his goal is that patient should not come back. Right. I, I leave the onus and everything, I give all the tools to the patient so that they can manage the pain themselves and you know, almost 80 to 90 percent of them get better. Very few people come back for further intervention. Further intervention. I think that's that would be really quite relieving for a lot of people. Yes, absolutely. Right. Coming to our, we are getting toward the end of this session, I have last two questions. So while I was preparing for this talk, one of the things uh, which I figured that the numbers of chronic pain uh, people who are actually complaining about uh, chronic pain, the numbers have increased pre, if I compare to pre-COVID era. What do you have to say about it? Uh, yeah, I mean, like I said extensively, why I said, you know, pre-COVID era, people are a lot more active. The biggest, the biggest two points I, would, I could say is just working from home is inactivity. Because like, like I said, increased inactivity of muscles 
leads to uh, increased soreness, actually increased stiffness, and that causes more uh, muscle pain. To just give you a basic example, if you're uh, if you're just sitting down and you're inactive for say about even for 30 to 45 minutes of inactivity just by sitting down, your metabolism decreases by nearly 90%. 90%. Just by sitting, not doing anything for 45 minutes, your metabolism decreases by 90%. So what happens if metabolism decreases 90%? All the good enzymes which are working to heal your muscles or protect your heart, they also basically decrease. And you also have inability to control your blood pressure, sugar, etc., which all contribute to pain. So inactivity and loss of physical activity is really, really a big thing. So that's why even your muscles, if for two hours and just sitting in front of a computer, your low portion of your muscles, almost 90% becomes inactive. You know, so that, that's why it's very important to sort of keep an alarm. You know, 45 minutes work, take a five minute break, just go for a walk. You know, even at home, go to the kitchen, don't keep a water next to you. Go to the kitchen, have a water, just look outside, you know, just have a fruit and then come back. That makes such a big difference. So that's the biggest thing, inactivity. Another thing is increased stress because like I said, negative emotions will always make your pain perception very sensitive. So that any sort of negative stress emotions will make your muscle more tight. And that also contributes to the increased pain in our age bracket, what I said. Now, any normally chronic pain is 45 to 50, but nowadays because of pandemic, it's become more 20 to 30, sort of 40 uh, year age right. Right back. On a rough percentage, what's the percentage you would say that after pandemic has started, that this many percent increase in the number of people who are complaining of such pains, right? Um, so there was a recent survey which showed like in India, like I said, prevalence of chronic pain in India is, is about 20%. That's complete chronic pain, I'm saying, including myofascial pain, cancer pain, whatever uh, the chronic pain example which I've told in the beginning. And in India, the population, if I say it's 20%, it's nearly 200 million people in India have chronic pain, which are not being treated the right way because they don't have access to the particular health setup or they go and they just brushed off as okay, it's all in your head. Pain is still in your head, but in a wrong way. But because of the pandemic, that 20% has probably increased almost 40%. Okay. So it's almost doubled in the last one year. And sort of correlates in, even though, you know, I can sort of extrapolate into my practice also. There's been a proportional increase, especially in myofascial pain. So now these numbers are just specific to India or it's a worldwide number? It is a worldwide, it worldwide. is a worldwide phenomenon. Okay. Especially COVID, there's a lot of interest, something called as post-COVID, long COVID syndrome. So people who have minor, mild COVID symptoms, you have just a fever running nose and you're fine in five days. Those people are also suffering from chronic pain. And more and more research is showing this is called long COVID syndrome. So. They've basically done research or they've interviewed nearly about 10,000 to 15,000 people in UK especially and Europe. What they've seen is any minor COVID symptoms also, they've had one year later also, they've had issues with chronic pain. So the main symptoms for these patients is fatigue. So any sort of, normally before you could run and walk and exercise, but now post COVID, mild COVID, they still have fatigue when they do uh, any sort of manual physical activity, climbing a flight of stairs, they feel fatigue. The second uh, sim main symptoms is people are forgetting things, sort of cognitive impairment. The last thing what they've seen is some people get some bowel problems or increase abdominal pain or sometimes suddenly the heart rate can go up and increase anxiety and stress, etc. So this is long COVID syndrome. Again, you know, a lot of research is going into this, uh, but there's no cure for it per se. It's just prolonged rehabilitation and just to work yourself slowly. So my main advice to young people is if you're an avid gymmer or a sports person and you had minor COVID and you're absolutely fine, do not immediately stretch yourself. Slowly build it over two to three months before you can hit the gym or do that rigorous exercise at least. Perfect, perfect. Well, thank you so much, sir, uh, for this wonderful session. And most of the questions I think uh, which you guys had were answered. Any last piece of advice before we say goodbye to the viewers? Um, I would say, I mean, chronic pain, like I said, is growing, but it's all about awareness. Once you recognize, you know, most of it is you can do it at home. The simple stretch is what I said. So, you know, now the lockdown is also lifted. So you guys, you know, have less fear, be more relaxed, get out there, you know, um, and just try to get back to what you were doing before. And hopefully things will settle down and you guys feel much better. Thank you so much. And thank you all who could be part of this session. We'll come back soon with another informative session. Till then, thank you. Thank, thank you, you, sir. Thank you. Thank you.